God, we love you. God, we thank you that we can meet tonight, even if it's through the interweb. God, I believe that we're living in a time that you have designed for something amazing. I believe right now that we are on the breeding ground of revival, an awakening, if you will. And so God, as we start this brand new series that we've titled Youth Revival, God, I pray that you would begin to set in motion a move of God. God, may it begin to change the world around us. Lord, we love you. We give you this time. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Don't mind me just getting everything all set up. Hopefully everybody's relaxed. Hopefully everybody is centered. Hopefully you're not too distracted with what's going on on Instagram as everyone's commenting. I encourage you to comment. I encourage you to say hi to everybody and continue to engage with us and in community. But more importantly, guys, I really want you to tune in to what I feel God has given me to share with you. I'm excited. We're going to be going into this three-week series, a series that we've titled Youth revival. And so I want to I want to pose tonight a, a question. Have you ever um, heard something that was supposed to be really important? Maybe you're in class and a teacher was giving instructions for a test, but you weren't really paying attention and then you found yourself having to ask again for clarification and maybe you kind of feel like, "Uh, dang it, I should have paid attention." For me, it's like when I'm driving, when I go out and about. Guys, I only know how to get to the church in my house. I'm directionally challenged. I have to use my phone like literally every day. My wife's behind the camera. And she's like, "There, that's right. He is directionally challenged. It's very, very true. And sometimes when I'm using the, the map and uh, that little person is talking to me and saying like, turn right, I don't always listen. I find myself getting distracted, and then I find myself having to recalculate, reroute, turn around. You know the deal. Like That is a story of my life. But I think sometimes our relationship with God can be the same way. He can be speaking to us, and it can be very important stuff. Stuff like our purpose, our direction. Stay away from that. Go to that. Take advantage of that. Spend time with them. And if we're not paying attention, if we're not fully engaged, we can miss what he's trying to say to us. And so this month, we're talking about this idea of a revival. And the definition of revival really is an awakening. It's a, a revival is a season and a space where God reintroduces himself to us, to you and me. And, and I would say that we're in that season right now with all of us kind of forced to stay in our homes we're forced to slow down the rhythms and the pace of our life. Where we might have sports and we might have extracurriculars. And I know some of us still have homework. I'm sorry, but that's just the way things go. Um, well, we're focused and forced to like slow down. And my heart in this season is to help you understand like God has given you ample time right here and right now to like really get serious about his word. Really get serious about spending time with God. So often we, our excuse is, well, we don't have the time. Well, God is giving us time now. He's giving us time. And so I want to encourage you, take advantage of that. We are living in a season where God is beginning to reintroduce himself to us. I believe this, that awakening and revival is beginning to stir in the waters. And I believe right now that the world is set. It is ready for God to reintroduce himself, for people to come to him in, in droves, in masses, because there's need, because there's hurt, 
because there's doubt, because there's affliction, because there's pain, where the church can step up and play the role that it was sent to be, which is the hope of the world, where people are coming from all different places of life looking for some outlet, looking for some kind of peace and stability. And I believe that they're going to find it in the person of Jesus. Guys, I believe that revival is here and it is happening. And why can't it start with the youth? Obviously, that's what I'm passionate about. But if you were to trace revival in history and when it started and when it ended and how it started and who started it, you'll see that often that's where revival starts, with the youth. You guys are the catalyst to change. You guys are the catalyst to revival. God likes to use young people. Why can't it be the young people that stand up and say, Jesus is everything. He's the hope of the world. Come. If you're tired, if you're broken, if you're lost, if you're confused, if you're hurting, if you're in pain, there's an answer. And his name is Jesus. Why can't it start with you? So that's the encouragement this, this series and this season that revival can start with you. But the first step for any of us to experience revival in our lives and around us is to learn how to hear God better. The reality is God is always speaking. The question is, are we positioned to hear? Are we positioned to respond? Okay. And so I want to ask you tonight, and this is something for you just to think about on your own. Are you confident that you know how to hear God? Are you confident? Do you feel as though you have a good connection with God? Because tonight, if you're not, I want to help answer some of that. I want to help give you some confidence as you go and spend time with Jesus on your own time, we're going we're gonna to go into scripture and we're going to learn how to better understand how to hear God. In a time like this, you better believe that he's not quiet. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. And it's up to us to be positioned to hear what it is he's saying. So let's go to scripture, because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. That's the only thing that we can invest and bet our life on is the word of God. So we're going to open up the word of God tonight. So John chapter 10, verse 27, John 10, 27, it says this, my sheep, which is you and I, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So what we can gather from that scripture that my sheep, they listen to my voice. Jesus, he's the shepherd. We're the sheep. We listen to his voice. He knows us and we follow him. According to scripture, if we belong to God, if we're a sheep, if we're in his pasture, if we said yes to Jesus Christ, we belong to him. Therefore, we can hear him. He speaks to his sheep. The question is, are we positioned to hear, are we positioned to respond? See, God is always speaking, but if we're honest, we don't always know how to hear him. We don't always know what it is that he's saying. And the reality is, I think everybody watching, you want to know, what is God saying? What is my role in this pandemic? What is my role in my family's life? What is my role in my friend's life? What is my role right here and right now? And I promise you this, it's not just sitting and watching Netflix. That's a benefit, but it's not everything. What is my role right now? Because the reality is God has a very specific role for you. He is speaking to you. We just need to get to a place where we can hear, where we can respond to him. Luke chapter 10, I love this, this story, this little passage of scripture. Luke 10, 38 through 42. This is what it says. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted. But Martha was distracted distracted. She had great intentions. She welcomed Jesus into her house, but something somewhere along the line from Jesus walking into her house, she got distracted and she got distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, 
My dear Martha, 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 you are worried and you're upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about, and Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Here we see that Jesus was teaching. He was trying to get this point across to Martha. Here we see Mary. Mary was getting a devotion while Martha was getting distracted. Mary was getting a devotion. She's sitting at the feet of Jesus. Jesus walked into her house, sat down, and she was mesmerized. She sat before him and just listened to him talk. And Martha had great intention. She wanted to serve and prepare a meal, but she missed what was most important, and that was what Jesus had to say. Who would you say your life looks like right now? Is it Mary? Jesus walks in, maybe right now you are glued into what's being said. You are, you are engaged in worship, or is it Martha? You get distracted. Maybe your intentions are great, and you love Jesus more than anything, but maybe... You find yourself often getting distracted. See, Jesus' words in the text, they still ring true for us today. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. There's only one voice worth listening to. And it's his. It's Jesus. And here's the bottom line tonight. This is what I want you to take away from our time together is listening to God Preparing yourself, posturing yourself to hear from God, that will lead you to revival. That will lead you to revival. And so how do we apply this? How do we hear God? How do we hear God? How do we apply this to our lives? Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says this. So faith, we talk about this often, faith comes from hearing and hearing by what? The word of Christ. The word of Christ. The word of Christ, which means God is talking. If we want to grow in faith, we've got to listen to the words of Christ. As you're tuned in tonight and you're watching IG and you're listening to what I'm saying, according to scripture, faith is coming. You are growing. You are tuning in and you are listening to the words of Christ. See, guys, we need faith to experience revival in our lives. We need faith to experience revival in our churches. We need faith to experience revival in our city and in our school. And it all starts from us hearing God's word. His, what? His word, which means what? God is speaking to us. See, in my own life, man, God has led me through his word. He's led me through the difficult seasons. He's led me through the, the, the great seasons, the seasons of tragedy, the seasons of triumph. He's encouraged me. He's challenged me. He's equipped me all from his word. Guys, my life calling, when I walked into ministry, God spoke to me. He revealed Isaiah 61 to me. Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. This is how I knew that God called me into ministry. In a season that I was seeking and trying to say, God, what is my purpose? Why am I here? He led me right to Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. It says this, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. God even spoke to me about my purpose. He revealed to me his plan for my life through his word. Guys, his word is the number one way he communicates to us. The question is, are we opening up his written word? Are we opening up his spoken word? If you're trying to hear God, the best advice I can give you is start by reading his word. Get into a good devotional. If you have questions about that, please reach out. We want to open up his word because that's where God speaks to us. That's where he shows us things. That's where wisdom is found. That's where those aha moments are found. It's through his word. And so I want you tonight to position yourself as you walk away from this message. 
Start positioning yourselves to hear from God, to set time aside, turn off the phone, turn off the distractions and say, God, here I am. Would you speak to me? Would you speak to me? Take out the earphones. Let all the things that are happening in and around your family and around your friends and don't let the fear of the world crowd out what God is trying to say. Position yourselves to hear from God. And the best thing you should do is walk into those moments with your Bible. Again, why? Because that's where God speaks to us the most. So that's what I want to encourage you to do. Even tonight, as you guys wrap up the evening and you go to bed, before you turn on Netflix, before you go on about the rest of your night, guys, I want to encourage you, open up your word and say, God, would you speak to me? God, would you speak? You'll be surprised, man. Often God will. When we give God the floor, that gives him permission to speak into our lives. So that's what I want you to do. So let me go ahead and pray, and then we'll sign off. God, I thank you for our students. God, I thank you that revival is stirring in the waters. God, we, we pray that you would continue to reveal more of yourself to us like never before. I believe that you are setting the stage right here and right now. God, for you to reintroduce yourself to this world. God, I pray that you would speak to us before revival starts. We first got to know you. We first got to hear your word. We first got to learn the way you communicate so we can walk in the ways that you've set before us. God, I pray that you would bring comfort and peace to all those watching. God, I pray that you would bring clarity to all those listening. In Jesus' name, Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Have a great night. This Wednesday, be looking for a graphic coming out. We're going to have a big quarantine Zoom club meeting. We're just going to all just jump on and hang out. So take advantage of that. Seriously, we just want to hang out with as many of you guys as we can, given this time. So we'll, we'll put out a code and an ID here um, in the next couple of days. But just know we love you. Your pastors love you. Pastor Angela loves you. Your church loves you. Anything we can do to serve you, please let us know. Okay? We love you. Good night, everybody.